What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Dark Horse Rowing. Today we are talking about how you can easily take something that you already understand, jumping, and translate that into better movement on the rower. I'm super excited. We're here in San Francisco, California, one of my favorite places on earth. The freaking Golden Gate Bridge is behind us, guys. Like, this is where we're filming today. This is incredible. We're talking about simply how you can take a jump and translate that into better movement on the rower. So let's talk about this jump a little bit. So guys, if we're talking about jumping, why jumping is beneficial to you when you get onto a rower? Well, the thing that a lot of people don't understand is how do I use my legs? How do I use my legs to get me moving on this machine? I understand and I see that there's a leg component, but often we like miss how do I uh, get my uh, how do I get my legs moving on the machine? We can take jumping and translate something you just intrinsically understand to the way that I'm gonna interact with the machine. When we're talking about the way that we apply a jump. When I coil to jump, my feet are flat on the ground because I intrinsically understand that I need my full foot connected for me to jump. Now, when I jump, I reach triple extension, meaning I extend my ankle, my knee, and my hip all at the same time in order to just create a jump. When I'm doing that, if I don't have my foot connected to the ground, I'm not able to create downward force to be able to push into the ground to propel me off of the ground. You gotta think about it this way. You're never jumping up. You're pushing off the ground to get up to the next step. Now, things are different if you take the heels out of the equation. If I told you, you have to jump up these steps, but you can't put your heels down, you're gonna create a very different kind of jump. And it's this springy bounding jump. But if I'm going for a max height jump, I'm not gonna do this springy thing. I'm gonna launch off of my whole foot. And it just doesn't feel comfortable if I'm on my toes when I go to coil and jump. It's a very different feeling. What I want you to think about, in order to create good force production on the machine, you are going to put that entire foot onto the foot stretcher, meaning I want your heels onto the foot stretcher for you to feel, how do I push? How do I push through my legs to create that jump? Because without the heel being able to press down, you are not able to access your posterior chain, your hamstrings, your butt, your back, those things that help you stabilize to create this nice strong push against the machine. It can't happen if your heels aren't down. And a lot of people spend time never putting their heel down when they're rowing and they just row on their toes. You cannot create a whole lot of force production through the toes. Now, I can't create a lot of balance when I'm standing either, but in order to create force production, get your heels down. And yes, I come up to my toes when I actually create all that force because that's triple extension. I'm not coming up to my toes because I'm thinking about coming to my toes. I'm coming to my toes because I've just created so much upward force that my toes just hang out down at the end. And I use them as just that light push off at the end, but the majority of the force comes from the foot. So let's talk about that on the machine. I want you to go take about, just do 15 really solid, tall effort jumps hop onto the machine, and I want you to try to apply that same principle through that foot. Try to jump off of the foot stretchers by pushing that whole foot down. Now, does that mean that your heels must always stay connected? When you're learning in our book, when you're with Dark Horse, yes. When you're learning, heels are always gonna stay down. The better you get, the more I'm going to allow that heel to flash. But because you understand that placing that heel is a really critical way of producing force, you're gonna to learn to drive it down and help you in your efforts. And at the end of the day, that's what matters, that you learn to love this machine because you understand how to move on it and that you just stop looking at this thing as a black hole of energy. Our goal, get you to have fun, get you to enjoy this machine and be effective. Be able to teach it to somebody else, be able to use it better if it's sitting in your garage and that you just enjoy what you're doing every time you're on this machine. So guys, again, thank you for joining us. It's been a fireside chat.
with Shane Farmer and Dark Horse Rowing. But in all honesty, guys, thank you for hanging out with us. If you guys are new here, I really would appreciate it if you would consider subscribing, joining into our gang, our amazing group of coaches and athletes around the world who are all here just to learn how to create a community around using this machine, the rower, as a better training tool for whatever your goals may be. We're just here to help usher in that learning process. So guys, thank you so much. As always, we will see you on the other side.